voice, you'd help us no matter what. <laughs> and I said, Sarah, why? I mean, why, why, at this point, you're, you're gonna fail. Even if you do great, like you can just the math isn't gonna work out. Like, why would you even want to do this? She's like, well, I just I feel like I have to do this. So I'm like, and I keep bugging her. I'm like, why do you want to do this? Why do I? And she's trying to like dodge and everything. And finally, she's like, why do you want to do this? She's like, because if I don't do it now, I'll never speak. So you said you would help. So help. I just, I just, I have to do it. And he's like, oh my God. So I said, it's not going to be easy. You're not going to do a great job because you haven't had the practice like all these other people. So, okay, here's what we're going to do. If you're, are you really committed to this? She's like, yes. I said, okay, tell you what. Pull out my flip chart or my little class chart. I wrote her name in. I said, you're going to go. You're going to go on the last day. And you're going to be last, and you're going to be awesome. And tell you what, every day between now and then, you have to come in to this office every single day for two hours. And we're going to work on your speech and your performance. I'm trying to convince her not to do it. Like, who? Because <laughs> I don't want to deal with this stuff right now. I should have said 30 minutes. I said two hours. She says, okay. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh. Newbie teacher. So I hand her a stack of public speaking books. I say, you got to read all of these. Every day, you're just reading all of these. And you're coming in, and we're going to film you. We're going to make sure that you are awesome. You're going to have to come in and get over your stuff. We're going to do this every single day. She's like, yes. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so she leaves. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Every day she comes in. Every day she comes in with an outline. She's prepared to speak every day. And every day it was like this epic struggle for these two hours to get this girl out of her shell. Like, because she's terrified, terrified to speak. It just wasn't, she's never, ever been encouraged to share her voice. I mean, every day it was like taking her from emotional low to try and lifting her up because she was so terrified. This girl had a tough life. I mean, she'd been beaten up by life, and I don't mean that metaphorically. This girl had a tough life. So her voice had been suppressed her whole life. She was never allowed to share who she was. She had it tough. So every day, it was like we have to work through her, just like give her a little competency and then a little kick of confidence. A little competency, a little kick of confidence. A little competency, a little kick of confidence. The two magical pills to self-esteem, right? Competence and confidence. Just give it a little bit, give it a little bit, give it a little bit. Get a little further, get a little further, get a little further. And every day, the same thing exact happened. It was unbelievable. Same thing. She'd go from low to start feeling good. She'd start talking. Everything's going pretty good. It's like pretty amazing to watch. And then she'd stick. And she'd freeze because she'd forget what she was supposed to say. And she'd usually burst into tears, or she'd freak out, or something would go on. And I'd, I'd remind her, I'm like, look, I keep telling her my favorite quote of all time I, uh, um, by Rosabeth Kubler Ross, which is I said, you know what, you're going to forget what you have to say. You're, you're going to forget what you're supposed to do, but you have to have faith. You have to, you have to have that faith in yourself that it will come out. I said, and I told her the quote the quote is, when you come to the edge of all the light that you know, and you're about to step into the darkness of the unknown, Faith is knowing one of two things will happen for you. There will be something solid to stand on, or you will be taught to fly. So I tell her it. I tell you. So I tell her, tell her, tell her, tell her. And, you know, by the end of the time working together, the day before, I'm like, she's good to go. I was like, I was so excited. I'm like, she's going to blast these other students out of the water. They haven't heard her peep the entire semester, and she's going to come in and deliver this unbelievable thing about volunteering. Like, she's got this thing stacked to the deck that everyone's going to change the world when this girl talks. I'm like, stacked to the deck. I wake up that morning, I never forget, I get my bag, you know, I'm walking to class. It's like, if any teacher's in the room, like, you've taught, like, real teaching, like, give yourself, for the teachers. Man. It's abysmal what we do in this country with our teachers. Abysmal how they're paid and how they're treated. And so I, I was like walking. Like, like there's, a, there's like a cloud of contribution you're walking on when you're a teacher. And you get to see them do stuff. You know, like I'm going to feel when I see you do stuff. It's just like, ah, it's elevating to see people do something and move the needle and, and like progress. I'm walking to class. I'm so excited to get in class. Everyone's coming in. I get back there because I sit back and I evaluate. I pull out my checklist. I pull out my forms. I pull out my calculator. I'm totally ready to like do everything. I'm looking around. Check. There's John. There's Tim. Check, 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 check. No, Sarah. Bails. And I was just like, ah. Class starts. We're in the first speech. 
I'm like writing thing, you know, I'm supposed to be assessing this person. I apologize to them later because I was just kind of like, where is Sarah? <laughs> Marking up this guy's form because it's like, but I got it. You know, sometimes you, you, you give, you help, you serve, you teach, and your students don't do your stuff. It's fine. It happens. And I'm accepting that. And I'm like, okay, get over it. She's not your responsibility. You, you did the best you could. You tried. You showed up. You you know, deal with it, kid, and I'm just all emotional and upset about it. I'm trying to thing, and the other guy gets up, and he's going through his thing. He's doing a great job, and I'm, I'm listening to everything else in the door. <coughs> Creaks open. And there's Sarah, and she's shaking, and she's looking at me, and, of course, you know, being the mentor, I'm like, get in here. <laughs> She walks in, same thing, man. She walks to her chair, and that girl just shrinks into her chair. And everybody's looking around, looking at her. Like, like it's amazing. The timing was because the guy's finished up his speech as she's sitting down. So everyone's like clapping for him, you know. But they're all looking back at her and then looking back at me in the back of the room. It was like, I'm, it was like slow motion. They're all like clapping wildly for him because he's done. And we teach him to everyone to give a standing ovation. Like you, we, we suck in our culture about celebrating people's voices. So anytime you hear someone do anything, give them a standing ovation. Every time. Just do it. Because do, do you agree? You just got to give it to them, right? So they're, they're giving a standing ovation, you know, for this guy. And they're all looking back at me and looking back at her. And it was like slow motion. They look back and they're like, is she going to speak? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Clap for him. Boom. He sits down. I go, Sarah, are you ready? She's like, yeah. She stands up. She walks over the podium. Oh, this is my makeshift podium for the day. It's mobile. So she walks up this podium. It's amazing. Just like we taught her. Like to find herself, find her center, to be peaceful, but be strong. She walks up to the thing. Just totally cool. Totally good to go. She's like, hi, my name's Sarah. And... Um, <laughs> And so um, she starts talking. She does a pretty good job. She's like getting into it. And she's like talking and she's, like, she's warming up and you can tell she hasn't done it before. And, and she's got some like ner nervous little like speaking ticks that she's doing back there and, and everything. And, 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 and she's kind of talking and, and we're all like, oh, please do a good job. Please do a good job. Please do a good job. And, and she's back there and she's like, she's talking and, and she's kind of warming up. She has got this weird like tonality to her though because she's, and she's doing it. It kind of sounds like this. It's kind of like, Da 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 And there's a reason they say like a deer caught in headlights. <laughs> Frozen. And that moment, my class teaches me everything I ever need to know about leadership, everything I need to know about supporting somebody. Because these people who had never talked to her, they don't know her. They're just like, they, they're, they're frozen. We're all frozen for a second. And then someone in the front row is like, you got this, Sarah. Someone over there is like, yeah. They're like, you got it. Keep going. Just keep talking. You're doing great, Sarah. You got this. You're doing so good. Just keep talking. You're totally, you've been nailing it. Just keep going. You're totally good. Just keep going. And she's like stuck. And they're saying this. And she's like, click, click. Huh? <laughs> it's like she came back. Click. <laughs> and so there she's like, she's listening to them. And I mic all my students because I want them to learn about the feedback, right? So they can hear the speaker. So there's a speaker under the table. And, and she kind of forgets she's mic right now because they're saying, you got this, Sarah. And she starts repeating it to herself. And she's like, you got this, girl. <laughs> you got this. You can do this. You can. Okay. Yeah. You got this. You've been doing great. Just keep going. I mean, that they, 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 everything's good. They they like you. Just keep talking. They're like just like Brendan said. And um, da 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 da. 
da 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 And she gets done, and we're all like frozen. No one claps. No one gives her the standing ovation because we're all like, she talked. <laughs> she walks out from behind the table. She walks out into the class. No one's clapping. No one's moving. We're all like, holy crap. She can talk. We're all just stunned by the whole African rhythm thing. I think she hypnotized us. I don't know. <laughs> She's walking back, and she starts seeing that no one's moving. We're all like this. And she starts walking back to her chair, and as she's walking back to her chair, she starts sinking, kind of like, what did I just do? <laughs> and she starts getting back to her chair, and we all kind of like, kind of like snap out of it. And we're like, oh, yeah. Uh. And she goes to sit down, and everyone stands up. And they give this girl this standing ovation. You could not believe. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. They give her this huge standing ovation. The buzzer rings. People are like hugging her and grabbing onto her. And they're just so lit up. It's like an ABC after school special, man. <laughs> this is like, it's like so unbelievable that she just did this. And I'll never forget because, you know, everyone's coming up to me and they're smacking me on the back. Good job, good job. Oh my God, you got her to speak. This is so freaking amazing. I can't believe this just happened. I'm like, I can't believe it either. Oh my God, this is so awesome. I'm so excited about it. Everyone's hugging the buzz and thing. I got, get, I got a class to go teach afterwards. And I'm like, I got to get myself together. I'm grabbing my things. And I look up, everyone's gone. She's gone. And then I didn't get to say congratulations. And so I'm, you know, putting my stuff away and I'm, Shoot, I wish I could have said something to her. I should have grabbed her. And I'm, I'm putting my stuff away, and I'm just starting to get, like, really emotional about it. I'm like, God, oh, that was so awesome. Oh, my God. So I'm getting all teary and putting my stuff away. And I got to get my stuff together because I got to teach a class next. And it really freaks me out when the teacher shows up crying, you know. <laughs> so I'm, like, trying to get, you know, trying to get, myself, to, trying to get myself together. I'm putting everything, and the door opens. And her face is full with tears, but the good kind. And her face is red, and she stands in full into the room like I've never seen her. Like, boom. Whoo. And she says, this is why we're here. 19-year-old girl says this to me. Says, thank you, Brendan. I just wanted to come back and say thanks because... Nobody ever told me I had any potential. Thank you. She turned and she walked out. I was like, this is a 19-year-old woman who has never been told she had any potential? Knocked me off my rocks. I just knocked me off my stability. I thought, how can there be people who've never ever been told they had an impact? It changed my whole world. It was like, how can no one? She's 19. She's been on the planet 19 years. Nobody ever told her she had any potential. Blew my mind. She's been through K through 12. She's been through four, almost four years of college. I'm like, nobody ever told her? How does that happen? How does that happen? But I saw the result and I was like, you know what? You can inspire people. You don't even know. You're just helping. You're just doing your thing. You don't even know what they've heard, what they've been through. You have no clue about their psychology. What they've, but you know what? They've been through some stuff, and maybe something you say can help them. I remember the next morning, I'm reading the school newspaper, and there's this quote in there from Henry David Thoreau, and it said something about the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. And I remember thinking, that, that's so not true, because you know what? The desperation's not so quiet anymore. You listen to your family, you listen to the culture, you read the media. We don't have, there's no quiet desperation anymore. It is a mass calling for help. A mass calling for something more meaningful, something where we can tap into our potential and live at that level. It is a massive, massive need and it is a thunderous cry for help and you're gonna show up.
Thank you. Thank you.